John Deere was an American inventor and manufacturer. He was born into a middle-class family in Rutland, Vermont in 1804. He was one of six children and the third boy. His career would start small and grow from power to power. And today we know John Deere is the name behind some of the best equipment around for farming and other mechanized work. Before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything we post. Here are some facts about John Deere you never knew. John's breakthrough was becoming a blacksmith. John Deere was part of a small, poor family. He managed to receive an apprenticeship as a blacksmith at age 17 with Captain Benjamin Lawrence. John managed to ply his own trade after just four years, and then for another 12 years, he moved around Vermont plying his trade. Competition was stiff, though he still had limited success. Not just one, but two of his blacksmith shops were destroyed by fire. Most people may have given up by now, but not John Deere. He simply got another shop and kept going, going west at the right time with almost nothing. A former employee of John ventured west and let John know that there was more opportunity in Grand Detour, Illinois. John left Vermont in 1836, facing bankruptcy, and he managed to avoid the fledgling economy of Vermont collapsing, which was known as part of the Panic of 1837. He had $73 in his pocket and faced debtors in Vermont who were summoning him for a debt he owed to the town of Leicester. John had a three-week-long trip to Grand Detour and traveled by steamer, canal boat, and wagon to get there. He set up a new blacksmith shop in Grand Detour and only a year later, he sent for his family to join him. His breakthrough came by accident and a keen sense of observation. In Grand Detour, John was not only the blacksmith, but the repairman as well. He made tools such as shovels, pitchforks, and plows. He was crafting a steel blade for a local sawmill. The blade broke in half and stuck in the dirt. When John tried to retrieve the blade, which was bent into a concave shape, he was struck by what would be the idea that changed his life. By the way, John Deere was not the first to invent the steel plow, but the first to make it commercially successful. Plows at the time were made of wood and cast iron, and had a shape that meant it had to be scraped clean of dirt every so often. John started working on plow designs and had sold three plow blades to farmers by 1838. By 1839, he had 10 plows built and 40 more by 1840, the first factory. By 1842, John Deere partnered with Leonard Andres to set up his first factory next to the Rock River in Illinois. This facility was originally known as the L. Andres Plow Manufacturer. By 1843, they had produced 400 plows, and by 1846, he had over 1,000 plows built. He entered his partnership with Andres and relocated his company to Malloyne, next to the Mississippi River, where he also had access to the railroad. John's business was taking off, the second factory, and the John Deere quality promise. By 1849, business was booming, and John Deere was producing 200 plows per month and was able to add a two-story addition to the factory. John was now a successful businessman, and in 1853, he bought out Tate and Gould, and his son Charles joined the business. The Deers were going from strength to strength. By now, his factory was also producing planters, cultivators, and wagons, in addition to plows. It was during this time that John decided he would never put his name on a product from his business that did not have the best of himself in that product. It would become the John Deere promise and is still the reason why John Deere is so well known and trusted today. John also believed innovation was the key to success in terms of staying ahead or in line with the competition. Changing of the guard. In 1857, John Deere was producing 1,120 units per month, but a recession was coming. In 1858, when the recession hit, Deere sold his financial interest to his son-in-law, Christopher Weber, and his son, Charles, to avoid financial ruin. Fortunately, Deere made sure his son Charles received a good education, having never been educated himself. Charles Deere attended private schools in Malloyne. He then attended Iowa College and later even studied at Knox College in Galesburg, Illinois. By the time he completed his MBA equivalent, he was studying at Bell College in Chicago. This after having joined the company as its bookkeeper by the age of 16. By the time Charles Deere took over the company in 1858, he was only 21 and would run John Deere for 49 years. John Deere becomes a politician and 
the Civil War breaks out. John Deere became the county chairman of the Whig Party, and as a staunch abolitionist, he was also highly involved in the newly established Republican Party. His company was incorporated as Deere and Company in 1868, and he was a supporter of the Union Army during the Civil War. After the war, Deere settled on a farm raising Jersey cattle and Berkshire hogs. His wife, Demarius, died in 1866. John then married her younger sister, Lucinia. He remained active in politics and was elected the second mayor of Malloyne in 1873 and immediately procured the first fire engine for the city. He co-founded the First National Bank and was trustee of the First Congregational Church. He was known for fixing Malloyne's sidewalks and sewers and tending to city health measures to prevent disease. When Deere became mayor of Malloyne, it was during a new temperance movement in the USA, and he passed an unpopular liquor license ordinance, which received widespread criticism. After two years of being mayor, John Deere had had enough of politics. The later years and the continuation of a success story. John Deere served as the president of his company until 1886. With Lucinia, he fathered four more children, which brought the total to nine between his first and second wives. John Deere passed away in May 1886, and his funeral was attended by more than 4,000 people who paid their final respects. The Deere family ran the company for another 96 years after his death. Charles Deere was an outstanding businessman and, under his control, expanded the idea of an independent wholesaler network called Branch Houses. These decentralized entities marketed and supplied independently owned retail outlets. The continuation of the family business by another generation of an astute deer man meant the business further grew to what we know today, development and failure. From 1888, steam tractors started making an appearance on American farms. John Deere began making gang plows, which could be pulled by these steam tractors, but never produced a single steam tractor. This steam age lasted about 30 years before gas and diesel took over. In the mid-1890s, the bicycle became a popular mode of transportation in the USA. John Deere tried to capitalize on this new craze and produced three models, the Deere Roadster, the Deere Leader, and the Moline Special. But like all crazes, this craze also died down. Charles Deere passed away in 1906. By this time, the company was producing product line cultivators, corn and cotton planters, plows, balers, and flatbeds. Things got even better. William Butterworth became the third president of John Deere by 1907 and instituted the first company pension plan for employees with more than 20 years experience and who passed the age of 65. The keen business sense of yet another president of the company brought six non-competing farm equipment companies under the control of John Deere. This further expanded the ability of John Deere to produce a full range of products. Further improvement came in 1918 during World War I when John Deere purchased the Waterloo Gasoline Traction Engine Company in Waterloo, Iowa. It was then that tractors would become a staple of John Deere as we know the company today. The first year of tractor production produced 5,634 units. The Model D tractor was first produced in 1923 and would remain in production for 30 years. The fourth John Deere president pulls the company through. In 1928, Charles Deere Wyman became president of John Deere. He set in motion what would become today's modern John Deere brand by focusing on technology and engineering. In 1933, the Great Depression set in and sales plummeted by a staggering $8.7 million per year, which was very high for that time. There were massive layoffs, pension cuts, and an end to part-time hours and vacation days. John Deere still tries to help its workforce by continuing its group insurance for the unemployed, makes rent of company housing affordable, has a group savings plan, and creates a make-work program. Wyman did the job of pulling the company through the Great Depression, and in 1937, the company reached $100 million in gross sales, World War II and after. In 1942, Wyman accepted an army commission as a colonel. During World War II, John Deere produced ammunition, aircraft, aircraft parts, military tractors for engineers, cargo, and mobile laundry units. 
By 1945, the workers of John Deere became unionized as collective bargaining gained traction in the USA. This new practice replaced the old practice of dealing with workers individually. In 1949, John Deere also produced its first diesel engine with the first live power takeoff and clutch, thus improving the design of the inventor Rudolf Diesel. Since the company produced its first plow in 1837, around 600 different tractor models have been designed, produced, and sold. These 600 John Deere models include about 40 backhoe loader tractors, 35 industrial tractors, 70 normal farm tractors, and 10 Waterloo boy tractor models. By 2019, the net profit of the company was about $3.2 billion. Conclusion John Deere has become one of the modern success stories for many reasons, but the golden thread probably was a string of very competent presidents and an inclusive policy towards its workers. The company is still known for quality equipment based Based on technology and engineering innovation and high quality control standards. I hope you enjoyed this foray into the world of John Deere. This is me signing off. Until next time.